Armenia, breathtaking beautiful mountain and forest scenery as far as the eye can see. Located in the northeast of the Armenian plateau, the Republic of Armenia forms a part of the Lesser Caucasus mountain range, which stretches parallel to the Caucasus mountains. Armenia is one of the countries located in the South Caucasus, which is an internationally recognized biodiversity hotspot. It contains high numbers of endemic species, those that can be found nowhere else on the planet. At the same time, it has less than 30% of its original natural vegetation left. Thus, protecting this hotspot and reversing the loss of its biodiversity is a crucial task. Armenia owes its biological richness mostly to the country's topography and location. Extensive woodlands, meadows and pastures shape the landscape. The forest protects the soil from erosion, ensures clean air and improves the provision of high-quality groundwater. Wood is one of the most important raw materials, which is used in a variety of ways, mostly as an energy source for the local population. Additionally, Forests in the South Caucasus offer a rich variety of non-timber products such as berry fruits, mushrooms, wild herbs and wild vegetables which serve as a vital livelihood for the local population. Indeed, forest is important for our community and for youth in particular. Since there are no employment opportunities for them, they use the forest to earn their living. All the people you see here selling mushrooms, they're all unemployed. So they can feed their families, they have to go to Ichivan forests and collect from there. Rural areas of Armenia are particularly affected by poverty. Many communities have no or a very limited access to the public gas network. This is why forests are an indispensable natural resource for the rural population. We mainly collect wild berries during the summer and autumn. We collect blackberry, cornelian cherry, walnut and store them for winter. All local inhabitants do it. We make our living this way. In autumn, we also extract wood from the forest to use as a fuel wood for winter. The forest plays a vital role for the livelihood of the communities. Over 90% of the community people use the forest to feed their families. Achakut village does not have natural gas, therefore people use forest wood to heat their houses. Nowadays, according to the legislation, every household is entitled to 8 cubic meters of fuel wood, provided that villagers organize transportation of wood from the forest. In the years following the collapse of the Soviet Union, it was difficult to maintain forest protection and preservation. Because of insufficient activities of supervisory bodies, illegal logging became a common practice. The result has been excessive deforestation and depletion of forests that has led to immense soil erosion and, particularly, contributed to the large decline of forest belts around the capital Yerevan. The immense pressure on Armenia's biodiversity, most notably on its forests and pastures, has called for consistent action. The forests in Armenia are mainly of protection and special significance. They are rich in biodiversity and have certain socio-economic functions. The cooperation in the forest sector between the Ministry of Agriculture and GIZ started in 2009. During these years, we have marked a number of important achievements, in particular, the project on strengthening the State Forest Monitoring Center was set up, remote sensing system was introduced through interpretation and analysis of satellite images, and necessary conditions were set for field studies. 
Presently, the Forest Management Information System is being established, which will provide all governmental institutions responsible for the management and protection of forests with accurate and up-to-date information. The next step will be to ensure applicability of the information system at a practical level and enable public access to the information system. On behalf of the German federal government, the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit GmbH, or GIZ for short, is implementing the program on sustainable management of biodiversity in the South Caucasus. Its special approach is that it does not only focus on protected areas, but on the whole territory plus its population and their livelihood needs. The program's objective is to develop concepts for the sustainable use of biodiversity in close cooperation with the partners of the Armenian government. With those concepts of sustainable use, we want to reduce negative impacts on ecosystems and at the same time develop incomes for local people in poor rural communities. As a first step, GIZ agreed with the government of Armenia to set up a nationwide forest monitoring system based on the interpretation of satellite images in order to guarantee an accurate database for sustainable management. The program supports the improvement of the economic value of biodiversity while aiming at motivating the population to sustain it. Moreover, the involved stakeholders not only value the sustainability of the program, but they also recognize its low-cost strategy. Both efficiency and transparency should characterize the practice of forest management. And if we compare the working methods with the past practices of labor efficiency and financial costs, then we can already see the privileges with this advanced system. Even in terms of planning, let's say forest management planning, which serves a basis for annual planning, in this case the developed tool with its supporting features and sub-modules will allow forest enterprises to do the planning of annual allowable cut within their own capacities. In more general terms, they will be able to do forest operational planning, and this process will be more transparent and easier to control between the Ministry of Agriculture, Hyanta, and the Monitoring Center. I want to point out two activities that have already been implemented jointly with the State Forest Monitoring Center. The first activity was aimed at determining the forest cover for the Republic of Armenia and the objective of the second activity was to determine the intensity of loggings by revealing the real situation in relation to loggings. Multispectral high-resolution satellite images are used to analyze the extent, the condition and the changing processes of Armenian forests. <laughs> It is possible to classify the tree species according to age groups. In summary, we can say that this system allows to do forest inventory by knowing the composition of tree species, age group, slope degree, tree growth conditions in the given area, whether reforestation or forest logging activities are allowed or not. Thus, it is easy and effective to search and find all the mentioned areas with the help of ArcGIS and e-cognition programs. The following images have been captured by the satellites RapidEye and Pleiades 1MS and procured with support of GIZ. This image, for example, allows the identification of different tree species of the forests. As can be seen, this part of the forest is mainly covered by beaches, with only a few parts covered by hornbeam. With the next image, the forest cover and density can be easily verified. This map shows how fire monitoring can be carried out. The yellow color represents areas burned in 2013, and the red color burned areas in 2014. Even illegal logging can now be detected. By using a remote sensing system, the State Forest Monitoring Center is now also capable of interpreting multispectral images of forest lands. Here, we can see the results of the assessment of forest cover change. When comparing this image, which was taken in 2012, with the next one from 2013, deforestation activities become clearly visible. 
Also, the area in Ichavan Forest Enterprise has been mapped by the State Forest Monitoring Center. The results of satellite image interpretation need to be proved on the ground by a field troop of the State Forest Monitoring Center. Before the field visit, usually a study is carried out to determine if the logging activity in the area has been legal as defined by the forest management plan or not. A field visit is made after a shapefile has been created and placed in ArcPad software. In the field, we identify the area and conduct a survey to make sure the stumps have been properly marked and numbered near the trunk. If the survey reveals that the marking is missing on logged trees, it's an indication of a case of illegal logging. Our survey revealed that these trees were logged illegally since no single tree had markings on it to prove legal logging. So we make the protocols on forest violations and submit them to senior management. The data is later sent to Hyanta of the Ministry of Agriculture to find out the cause of violations. The State Forest Monitoring Center calculates the total area of the deforestation region by combining the forest cover change map with field verification data. This calculated data, compared with the official annual harvesting plans provided by Hyanta, help to detect illegal logging activities. The official harvesting plan only indicates 39 compartments as official logging areas. However, logging activities which have been identified through satellite interpretation and field verification in 2011 to 2013 highly exceed this number. Vast quantitative changes have been noticed. The result? A total of 1,203 compartments with logging activities have been identified, over 1,100 more than officially registered. The received results and data were then entered into the FMIS and submitted to the State Governmental Board of Forest Monitoring. In the scope of forest management component of the program, it should be pointed out that under the main actions activities have been implemented to strengthen the legal framework namely reforms for improvement of the National Forest Code as well as different activities at institutional and technical levels. But most of all, I want to put the accent on the importance of newly introduced remote sensing tool in the State Forest Monitoring Center, where we already have the necessary capacity for implementation of activities. The tool proved to serve the purpose. Chief Forester Madatchan shows how this works in practice. Mr. Madatchan is responsible for approximately 21,000 hectares of forest in Sefkar Forest Enterprise in North Armenia. Today he is planning cutting activities within a specific forest area. A respective satellite image can be displayed in the forest management information system. The system illustrates information such as specific features of an area, forest density, slopes, tracks or roads, and maps them onto the satellite image as transparent and individually selectable layers. In this example, the yellow and green colored areas of the multifunctional zoning map illustrate where cutting could take place. A new function also allows displaying areas with only slight gradients, areas where logging would be possible. Thus, this new forest management information system provides access to accurate data and makes our job much easier. In this sense, we don't have to carry forest inventory books with us during the field visit, and eventually this system is very efficient and effective in organizing the overall process. After computer-based analysis, Forester Madachen, together with his employees, leaves for the identified forest area. Now, equipped with an analogous map and a microcomputer, the theory is being put into practice. During preparations, we already predefined the area according to Forest Management Planning document and used GPS to determine where the area is located. We have information that this is a hornbeam forest where care and sanitary cutting activities are planned. Now we are in the compartment and it's time to start the measures for allocation of the cutting area. 
For this purpose, we use a GPS device to open the relevant column displayed on the screen for allocation of the cutting area. Determine in the field which tree needs to be marked. In this case, it's a hornbeam tree. Then we also mark the selected tree on the device. Afterwards, we enter the data on the allocated area into the GPS system with relevant reference numbers marked on trees, site height and length of construction wood. All registered information will later on be easily transferred to the office computer. Back to the office, Forrester Madachan evaluates the data which was collected by using the microcomputer in the forest. The advantage is that data is accurately imported into the system, all measures in the forest are traceable and forest inventory data is always up to date. The completed harvesting plan is electronically transmitted to the headquarters of Hyanta, where each harvest plan is approved and submitted to the Ministry of Agriculture for the final approval. Cuttings which are not recorded by the system are obviously illegal cuttings. We still have cases of illegal forest use and for the forest management staff this is a very important tool that provides direct access to the data and up-to-date information about changes in forest lands. I would like to note that with the establishment of the system we see the benefits and I think that the ongoing activities should be continuous because we have a lack of qualified specialists. I believe that our proven partner, GIZ, will continue the project in terms of capacity development. In relation to the introduction of the forest management information system, we already see possible improvements. It's noteworthy that forest management plans serve as a basis for allocation of cutting areas and annual allowable cut is approved by the plans. Some of the forest management plans will expire soon and the introduction of this system will be a great support by taking care of technical and financial aspects of the process. In particular, it will be possible to easily determine and demarcate cutting areas in the field by using the relevant tools which will make the process effective and easy to control. It will also provide direct and easy access to information for the purpose of stock taking and cadaster maintenance. After approval by the Ministry of Agriculture, forest workers harvest the previously marked trees. The wood will be sold in the market. Some have mixed feelings about it. With regard to other forest-related issues, my approach is that we don't give back to the forest what we expect to receive from it. The point I want to make is that the forest is not used by ordinary citizens. The people that use the forest are those few who greatly profit from forest use. The Forest Management Information System is the tangible output of successful cooperation between GIZ and the Ministry of Agriculture. It has resulted in more transparent and consistent procedures, thus serving to the equal benefit of people and nature. In close cooperation with our partners from the Armenian government over the past five years, we have developed new methods for the monitoring of biodiversity to gain accurate and reliable information about the state and the pressure on biodiversity. We have developed new methods for the sustainable management of forests and grasslands. And we have streamlined institutional procedures and created transparency by the setup of state-of-the-art IT and information systems. With the handed over solutions, our partners can significantly improve their biodiversity management. GIZ is further supporting the use and the nationwide introduction of those solutions with a special focus on the training of responsible partner representatives. From the very first year we started to work on strengthening the capacities of the monitoring services so that relevant monitoring activities of all forest enterprises can be properly organized and issues of forest enterprises can be effectively addressed.
Over the last two years, we have made tangible progress in relation to the establishment of the forest management information system, again thanks to GIZ. The objective was to have all forest-related information gathered and placed in one system and be accessible to interested organizations, NGOs, environmentalists and to the public at large. This project is continuous and, within the coming two years, we will further reinforce the service. Thus, I would like to express my gratitude to international organizations and to GIZ in particular on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture and the government for cooperation and major activities that have been implemented during these years. We are willing to continue our future cooperation and make information on overall forest management available to the public.